Hey everyone, I'm Julie Gunlock, host of the Bespoke Parenting Hour. For those new to the program, this podcast is focused on how parents should custom tailor their parenting style to fit what's best for their families, themselves, and most importantly, their kids. Today, I'm really excited to have on Nicole Solis. Nicole is a senior fellow at the Independent Women's Forum, um, and she writes for the Education Freedom Center. She's also a stay-at-home mom who has two children, and she lives in Rhode Island. Nicole is well known as um, as a mom. She's actually very famous, particularly in in uh, in parent circles. She's that mom who got sued by the teachers union, <laughs> and they sued her because she had the audacity of asking too many questions. That is something you're not allowed to do until now. Um, But that teacher's union was not smart, and Nicole is an attorney, and she is not easily intimidated. So we're going to talk to her a little bit about that case. Um, And if you are interested in more more sort of a deep-down discussion on that case, check out IWF's She Thinks podcast, where Nicole was a guest, I think, I think many, many months ago, uh, but where she really goes into that case and gives details. And also on IW Network, the Independent Women's Network, uh, she had a great conversation with Ginny Gentles on the How to Escape Your Government Assigned School uh, podcast that Ginny runs there. So there's two other sources for you to find out more, and we will touch on that here. But first, I want to welcome Nicole. Nicole, thanks so much for coming on. Hi, thank you so much for having me. It's really exciting to talk to you. I have to say you are sort of, I feel like you are like the alpha mom of parent, uh, of, of, of parent activists. You are like, this is how you do it. This is, you are a great example, example of the right way to, to, to fight back. So before we get into some other topics of parenting in general, which I really wanted to switch over to, give us kind of the elevator speech. Tell us what happened to you and how you decided to fight back against really this bullying intimidation on the part of the teachers unions. Yeah, well, this started about a year ago. I enrolled my daughter in kindergarten in my public school district, and I wanted to know if they were teaching critical race theory and gender theory. And my school wouldn't answer any of my questions without public records requests. So I I called them, um, I emailed them, and this is the only way that I could get my questions answered. And when I submitted those public records requests, which were hundreds, because it was the only way I could ask a question, um, my school district threatened to sue me in a public school board meeting and made the entire school board meeting about me. That was in itself an out-of-body experience, which (laughs) I think I would need another hour just to talk about what they did to me. Um, But they, they decided not to sue me. And then two months later, the teachers union did sue me for submitting those public records requests that, again, my school district told me to submit. And ever since then, I've just been doing as much media as possible to talk about what happened to me and to encourage other parents to fight back against their school board when they bully them so egregiously um, in the way that they did to me. Well, Nicole, we know now, thanks a lot to Luke Rosiak's reporting on this and, and frankly, other reporting on this, that the there's no daylight between school boards and teachers unions. It is an incredibly incestuous group of people. I mean, the the organizations in that, you know, you'll you'll have a school board member up there. And then you find out in their bio that actually they were the head of the teachers unions. And this is also true for the PTA, by by the way. The PTA often has people involved that are part of this, these other organizations. And so it's really a cabal. And so it's funny when you're talking about, well, the teachers union, you know, ultimately sued me, but, you know, it was going to be the the, um, school board. I'm like, you know, I'm sitting here listening going, no difference. There's no difference between these organizations. (laughs) And that also loops in. That's correct. That it also loops in public school administrations. Um, and I say public school, you know, and I also, I'm always really careful when I talk about these things to say private schools are just as bad when it comes to CRT, some of the uh, environmental alarmism, the gender stuff that they're teaching. But in this case, this kind of intimidation that we're seeing and, and these very powerful organizations that can go against parents, that's almost really just the public schools. And, and I think private schools are a little bit more, more reluctant to bully because obviously you pay tuition there. So it is kind of an interesting thing to think about when you are, you are being harassed by incredibly powerful institutions in America. Yeah, I mean, they have all the money in the world to bring lawsuits against parents. Um, you know, the teachers union, the NEA that's doing me there, they're a $360 million teachers union. So yeah. 
even if we do dismiss this lawsuit on the basis that they're harassing me, which is our argument, you know, they might pay me a nominal, uh, you know, damages yeah. for being harassed and then they'll, they'll move on. And, uh, the reason why I wanted to speak out so much is to say, well, look, you know, I, I can't defund you with this lawsuit. I mean, I wish I could and maybe I'll have a great judge who will, you know, make that happen. But yeah, at the end of the day, I, I can make the, um, make this known what you did to me and, yeah. Um, you know, have this not happen again, because I well, think they thought they were going to win just by suing me and silence other parents. And Well, it, and it works. It, it works in many cases. And, and this does take money mm-hmm. and it does take patience, my goodness, to get through this. And, you know, I, but one thing I want to talk about and, 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 you know, this bespoke parenting hour, the whole point of being a uh, of being a bespoke parent is tailoring um, your parenting that um, to your family. And I think there's, uh, you know, there's way too much judgment on parents today and, and, and pressure to do it in a certain way. So I like to interview women who do it or parents. I, I have interviewed some men um, who, who kind of have kind of unusual parenting uh, styles or find themselves in, unusual circumstances that might impact their t- the style of their their parenting and you know it's interesting i think of you you know so, you know uh, upcoming we have a, an emergency room doctor who's going to talk about you know how she has really difficult hours we've interviewed truck drivers people in law enforcement that you know might have strange again strange hours or some in, unusual circumstances and i think of being a parent activist and a sud- I, I feel like that you were kind of a, it, it happened suddenly right um because you just were, you were just enrolling your daughter and asking normal questions. So what I'd like, I'd like to talk to you about is what was your life like before all this happened? Like, tell me, you know, I know you're a stay at home mom, you know, but tell me about sort of what your life was like before you, you generated all this and not you, you didn't generate it, they did, but the, you know, but some of this national attention that you've gotten has got to have, you know, sort of affected things in your life. So tell us a little bit about what it was like before. Yeah, uh, my life was very private and peaceful. Um, I mean, my family, we have a very harmonious household. My kids are healthy and happy. Um, we have, I have a wonderful marriage, and we really didn't have any um, extraordinary stressors in our life, you know? Yeah. So, um, I mean, my I was focusing on gardening. You know, I was just, like, <laughs> going about my life, like, picking the right <laughs> tulip bulbs and measuring the pH of my soil. I mean, it, um, I, I'm, I've always been like engaged in, in what's going on, but I've never participated in publicly in the way that I am now. Um, and I felt like I had to, because when I saw my name on that agenda of the school board meeting, which said mm. we are going to discuss bringing a lawsuit against Nicole Solis. So it wasn't just like lawsuit mm. against a parent. They, they named me on their public agenda. Um, I had to have a public response because this was meant to destroy my life personally. This was meant to ostracize me from my community just as my children were going to um, participate in the community by going to school. And so for me, I felt like I had no choice but to respond publicly because it was either that, fight them publicly, or sort of like agree that, okay, fine, I'll, I'll be quiet because I don't want you to hold my kids hostage um, and, you know, bully my kid in school. And I, I guess I'll just be the outcast. That was not an option for me. So then the question became, okay, well, what am I going to deal with if, if I do this? And of course, I was concerned about my kids' best interests and welfare at school. And so after my school board meeting happened, the first thing I did was en- enroll them in a private school. Mm-hmm. Um, and I... I found a school where I was very honest with them. I said, this is why I'm coming here. This is what my school did to me. Um, and I need to know if you teach CRT and gender theory. This is a Catholic school, and I know not all Catholic schools are um, immune from this, but um, mine was very clear for me that they don't do this. And, yes. um, you know, they allowed me to see things. I had a tour, which I couldn't have. So, But what I do now is um, I keep my – I have a six-year-old and a two-year-old. Um, my six-year-old daughter is completely unaware of, of what is happening. I don't let her see any of my media that I do. Um, I think one time it came on TV and, um, I just said, oh, that, that was mommy's meeting. So I'm very <laughs> protective of her. You know, I, yeah. she doesn't know how you get on TV. She right. saw it once and I was sort of like, sort of like, oh yeah, that's cool. Right. And, you know, we never really talked about it and she didn't ask any questions. Um, because I don't want my story to be her story. This is what I'm doing for her. So that way she can live her life and have a great education and do whatever she wants to do. 
Um, That's right. As she gets older, um, of course, there, I'm there's a also there's also that, the, the, there's also the idea, which, again, many schools around the country don't seem to have this concept of, that some concepts are too much for young children. This is a lot to explain to a child. You know, mommy's on, you know, fighting about this, that, and the other. It is a subject that mm-hmm. is very sophisticated. And, you know, I, ha- I I don't know about you, but I have tr- sometimes trouble explaining CRT to people because it's a complex subject. It is not one right. plus one. And so, you know, while we fight as parents to keep these kinds of concepts out of school and we're constantly gaslit and told, well, it's not in school. And then you find out it's integrated into the curriculum, into like English class and math class and, and these completely wild ways. Um, you know, that's, that's also co- is why it's complicated trying to explain to people how these things can come into the classroom, but maybe not like, okay, now we're going to learn about CRT. Um, so again, you know, that's, I think one of the, uh, one of the very important roles of parenting and what ultimately you're uh, fighting for here is really having the control to determine what your daughter is ready to see and what she isn't. And so um, I, it's interesting that your own personal story really kind of connects to ultimately what you're, what you're fighting for and that's control I, I, over your daughter. It, it, exactly. And, you know, I know that I'm not going to be able to control everything, um, I anticipate if this continues at this, you know, intense rate that it's going, that as she gets older, maybe there will be parents on the playground that recognize me and don't want their kids to play with, with my kid. I hope that doesn't happen. I hope we can all just agree that we have different politics and our kids can play together. But if that ever happens, because I know that happened to another parent whose kids are older, um, you know, I'm, I'm right now, I'm thinking of ways that I'm going to explain that to her, you know, yeah. is it going to be me saying, well, sometimes families have different beliefs and some families are okay with different beliefs and some families aren't okay with different beliefs. We're okay with people having different beliefs, but we have to respect other families if, if, you know, they just don't want to be around people with different beliefs. So, well, you know, I, I, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm turning that in my head and I'm like, oh, is that what I'm going to say? I don't know. <laughs> Do I have to know, say this? I, I hope not. You know, I think, I think you're very, very smart to, to deal with this. And, and, you know, you and I have talked about, uh, you know, touched on a little bit about my own experience about, um, when my children were in elementary school and the Parkland shooting happens, ha- happened in Florida and w- was just an incredibly tragic thing, which in, in our media, our media tends to immediately, um, go for, you know, the only narrative is gun control, gun control. And so I actually was asked to go on Fox News quite a bit. To defend, I, I write a, a lot and advocate for the Second Amendment, and I live in a dark, dark blue town that is very strong. There's, uh, there's like f- several Moms Demand Action and every town chapters in my community, and um, and we, my kids had a very hard time. Now they weren't as young as yours; they were a little bit older, and there was terrible bullying and isolation and ostracization. Um, of my family. And so it's smart to start thinking about that. And hopefully I don't, you know, I don't know about the politics of where you live, but I've heard you say one of the ways you've gotten through this, and this might've been on another podcast where I heard you say you, cause someone said like, how do you do all this? You talked about setting up uh, or having, or at least creating your own support system. Tell me a little bit about the support system that you have in place to help your family deal with kind of this sudden fame. Yeah, I was really lucky because I had already been um, adminning a private Facebook group about indoctrination in mm. school, and it was just to, to raise awareness. So when my school board targeted me, I had already had hundreds of people that knew exactly what was going on just right. you know, by sheer luck of me doing this. And then they would tell other people, and then other people would reach out to me on Facebook and on social media. And so over the course of a year, I have a whole network of people now across America and other states that I, I text, um, I have chat, chat groups and, you know, signal and telegram and all these other platforms where parents can just ask each other a question, um, keep each other updated, give each other support. And for me, that has been invaluable because my town, like yours, is extremely liberal. I have a lot of allies here, but you would never know it based on the right. politics of the town. <laughs> yes. You know, Nicole, so, it's so it's so interesting that you say that, you know, at IW, IWF and, you know, you're part of uh, the IWF family. You're a senior fellow there. But as you know, um, late 
well, I should say in the fall last year, we launched this new network called IWN and it's to do exactly what you just described is to help women set up these, these networks of support because you know, it's funny that you say I have support in my local town, but you never know it. This is the exact, this is the exact situation I have because there's such fear to speak out here if you are not an, a progressive liberal voter or, you know, a progressive liberal on social issues or, or on, and, and on education issues. I mean, there's an awful lot of people around here who support every single thing that the, my local public schools are doing in terms of the gender and CRT and, and the other issues that parents are dealing with right now. Um, and they're perfectly fine not being communicated with. So it's, it is really hard to find those networks and doing that. Um, I mean, I think you, thank goodness you had that network already in place. But I think that IWF really saw that as a need. And so we're trying to set that up for other people um, because that's ultimately, I think, I think in, the, in our day and age where you can be canceled, you can be harassed, you can be bullied, you can be doxxed. Um, there is this fear of, of not just speaking out, but even supporting causes that might not be politically advantageous to your particular location. Um, so I'm, I think that's great. And I think that, you know, hopefully um, if you are a woman who wants to speak out, you know, you'll check out IWN um, to, to, to start building that network for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I've looked at IWN and um, it, it's really great the way that you guys post your stories and then people can interact with comments. And um, one of the things that I hope comes of platforms like that is that we learn that this fear we is is sort of fake news now. I hope yeah. we can demystify it and say, actually, they just convinced us that all this was scary, and it's really not. And look <laughs> at all the people we have that are ready to speak out. And then we watch them kind of fold like a house of cards because they don't have a plan B. They're just they're just hedging on everyone remaining scared. What are they going to do once we stop being scared? That they is such a that is such a great point. That is such a great point. So. Okay, so building on this sort of um, story that you're telling here, which I think is fascinating, um, what is your life like now? You've touched on that a little bit. Your daughter, you know, sometimes your TV pops up. But this is essentially, you know, it's funny in your bio, I said she's a stay-at-home mom. You really aren't. You're kind of like a professional activist at this point. And I sus, you know, I like I, you know, I don't need to get it, but you're not paid to go to like be <laughs> angry in your whole in your own town. You're not paid to do this. So, you know, what has this been like in terms of? I mean, I doubt you're doing a lot of tulip, you know, uh, planting <laughs> right now, um, because I know for myself it is very hard for me sometimes. It's just like, oh God, I don't want to go to the school board meeting. I don't want to go. I'm tired, <laughs> you know. So, how has this really changed? you know, your life now, what is, what is your day like? Yeah. So my day from morning to night is advocacy or activism or whatever you want to call it. I can tell you just today I was texting, texting with a mom from Arizona. She said, okay, this is what happened. I requested this information. It didn't work out. And I said, okay, I think you might have a first amendment claim. Let me, let me contact this law firm and and see if I can tell them that I know you and maybe they can talk with you. Um, you know, and that takes time because I'm texting while I'm cooking breakfast. You know, I don't, <laughs> I can't be on the, on the phone while with my two year old who's waiting for his breakfast. I'm, I'm definitely, uh, multitasking more than I ever yeah. have in my life. Um, and, and you know, you're right. All of this is not paid. This is because we're all parents that know that the future of our kids hinges on this culture war. And, um, the other thing I did yesterday and the day before, I went out with um, a guy named Billboard Chris on Twitter. You can look him oh, up. Oh, fantastic. And we stood, yeah, fantastic. We stood on street corners and had conversations with people about the medical abuse of children sucked into gender oh, ideology. Great. And then, you know, I posted all those on Twitter and, and tried to get more conversations going and help to promote Chris because his work is amazing and brilliant. So that's been my life just the past three days. And I have to coordinate this with my husband who works full time. We're a single income household. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, I, I, I wish I could be paid for this um, <laughs> work, but at the same time, it's always been um, very, very difficult to monetize this kind of activism. Yeah. And, you know, I'm going to be doing it anyway. I, I think that um, this is, you know, not what I plan on doing. I'm really a full time working mom now. Um, I get to work from home and I get to do what I believe is the most important thing I'm, I've really like ever done in my life. So, uh, yeah, it's just, it's more stressful, but it's, it's worth it. And I'm 
doing this for my kids and all parents that are doing this for free. You know, I'm not the only parent working for free here. There, this is really the new parenting is this, this advocacy. So I, I'm curious about one other thing. You know, I talk to so many moms all the time who just are there. I call them lurkers. They're lurkers on different Facebook pages. They're lurkers on different, um, you know, they might lurk on Twitter, but they never engage. And it's just like, they cannot, they would never do that. And it's interesting to me because I'm always like, why not? Right? <laughs> Cause I've been doing this. I've been, do- I'm like, I will not say how old I am, but it's not, it has been many years that I have been doing this. And so I'm not like, come on, let's fight, let's fight, let's fight. That's why I love Twitter. I love Twitter for that reason. Right. And let's, let's get into this. Right. <laughs> Um, yeah. but many, many, I am, I know that I'm unusual. There is like a screw loose and I'm, I'm unusual, especially I think for women <laughs> who, who generally, who generally like don't like this kind of stuff. And we've actually, we've done quite a lot of, uh, you know, we've done a lot of study. IWF has actually looked into this, you know, like what women kind of go for. And this is sort of like aggressive argh, fighting, but I think that's <laughs> changing. I think that's changing a bit. And I wanted to ask you kind of why did you, cause you, man, you were like, this is insane. And, and, and the thing is you weren't crazy, like grizzly bear on a hind legs, you know, um, and you weren't threatening. You just simply were asking questions, but then it started to get more, like you started to get more refusals and the, the, and then, you know, them actually discussing suing you on a school board meeting, but you, it didn't quiet you down. What was it? Is it your law degree? Cause I mean, I do think that that could probably be a somewhat significant, like you understand a lot of what your rights are probably in a more profound way than other women. What was it your support system? Was it the fact that you'd been monitoring these face or, you know, you, you'd been uh, sort of managing these Facebook groups. So you kind of knew the lay of the land. What do you, what do you identify? Maybe, maybe you don't know, but like, talk, talk, discuss that with me. Why did you feel like I can make this, I can fight this. You know, I think that I've, oh, I think it's just in your personality, you know, which isn't to say that, like, I'm going to fight everything. But when it comes to really important things like my kids, I am a fighter and that it's very easy for me to tap into the fighter in me when it comes to my kids, which isn't to say that other parents that are scared to fight don't want to fight for their kids. But for me, um, I just feel sick to my stomach. If I were to let someone bully me in the way that my school and the teachers union is bullying me. But then I think there are people who feel sick to their stomach when they just think of the prospect of fighting back in a conflict. Like conflict is like, oh, my God, I, I, it's too much anxiety for them. Yeah. But you're right that, you know, having a legal background made me not intimidated, you know, by a school board. I mean, if anything, I, I have so much contempt for these people that are yes. just like ordinary people who act like tyrants in a school cafeteria. It's like <laughs> pathetic in my, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, I'm like, I'm, I'm like, I saw you at the grocery store the other day and now you're, you're going to like <laughs> talk about suing me in front of like, are you insane? Like, why do you, so that in itself, I mean, I think, and also just being engaged politically is um, like knowing what's going on will really put things into, into perspective when you're, when you see that something this, um, absurd that's happening to just a mom in the community happens you're going to have a more realistic perspective of, of how, how to respond um and i don't want people to be overly focused on on my law degree because i don't want people to think that oh you know she can do it because she's a lawyer you know i didn't practice law for a very long time before i decided to stay home with my kids and this is really something that anyone can can do if you just get over the fear of say you know a media interview or get yeah. over the fear of just speak, speaking in front of people because I've talked to a lot of parents that, that have in my town that have contacted me or in other towns and they're like, Oh, I'm kind of scared to speak at this meeting. And I, and I say, just, just give it a try the first time. And I guarantee you after that, you're going to like it. You're going to, you're going to feel empowered. You know, you're not yep. going to do it once and go, I'm so, I'm so glad that's over. I never want to do it again. You're going to want to keep doing it. You know, it's interesting. I wanted to ask you about media training because I will tell you, you like, you are so composed after actually on this, um, I, I'm impressed by your composure, even on this this podcast. But I, you know, I've done media for many, many years, and it is intimidating to this day. If I have to sit in a studio, and 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 it can be very intimidating. I host a morning uh, radio show um, each week, and I'm not intimidated on that at all. I enjoy it. I love it. But sometimes we get guests where I have to interview, you know, pretty big names and it, it can be a little intimidating. And, um, and so I think it's comforting, um, to hear even what I would say media pros, uh, or people who've done it 
for many years or an and, and intense, I mean, you're on Tucker, you're on Laura Ingram, you're on very high profile shows um, say that, yeah, it could be nerve wracking. That's that that humanizes, I think, the the experience. But did you get media training before this? Because you are very good on screen. Thank you. Um, I didn't have media training, but I'm lucky because I was a theater major in college. So <laughs> there you um, go. <laughs> I'm yeah, I'm not um, uh, like I'm not as I'm not green with with I've never done TV. I did um, some stage acting in, in college and then I decided to go to law school. So, I, you know, I don't even have that much acting experience, but I think it gave me enough experience to do public speaking. And one thing that I really credit my theater training um, to is, is that when you're doing stuff like this, you just have to remember that you're, you're talking to a human being. These are, you know, we're all just normal people and you got to zero in on the conversation you're having with the person in front of you, because ultimately what we're going for is truth and you just got to relax and, um, you know, just focus on the person you're talking to. It's so, as as possible. it's, it's so interesting, Nicole, because I actually the the I'm the co-host on this radio show, and the 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 main host and the guy really runs the show. I'm definitely like a sidekick, is Larry O'Connor, and it's interesting because he was a theater major and then went on to manage theaters, like very big very big theaters and worked with actors and actresses. And he's so funny because he's always like his first wife was an actress and he's always talking about drama um, and how dramatic <laughs> act. He's very fun to talk about the Johnny Depp, Amber Heard uh, <laughs> trial going on. <laughs> he's always saying it's like touching too close to home. But the point is, is that it's funny <laughs> that you say that because he is so great at um, his presence is very big and very entertaining. And so that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot. But, but I think the important, as I'm saying, you know, I'm saying, oh, no, get out there. Then I'm talking about Nicole Solis having a theater background. You do not need a theater background <laughs> uh, right. to do the media. I will tell you, I am, I am, uh, I, I certainly have no background in, in theater and that stuff and I managed to do it. So it does help though. And I think, I think, you know, to some degree, a theater background plus a law degree, goodness, that is, uh, that does really, um, I think bump up the confidence uh, points for you. But I think the great thing is, is um, ultimately you were a mom, a stay at home mom who was encouraged to do this because of the passion for her own children and safety for her own children. And that you don't need a theater background to get pa or a law degree to know what's right and wrong and to get um, pretty pissed off uh, enough to stand in front of your school boards. And it's good advice what you said about just go, just do it once and then you'll want to do it more. Cause that's true. Every time I'm like, you know, nervous to go on a media hit, I'm like, Ugh. and then afterwards I'm like, Oh, I want to do this again. This was fun. So you're absolutely right about that. So I see, I think sort of the practice makes perfect. And I've often told people, write it down. Nobody's going to, nobody's going to harass you at a school board meeting. If you're reading a statement, it's fine. But with that practice, you might get more natural at it. So very interesting exactly. little little uh, bio there, Nicole. I totally get it now. Um, <laughs> well, listen, I'm so glad that you came on, and I think that um, encouraging moms uh, to do this is is important. But I also do think it's really interesting what you've said about the impact it's had on your lives. We need to remember that the the parents out there that are doing this, it's taking away time from their normal lives and um, and from your, you know, your kids and family life and things like that. And it is a sacrifice. So as a mom who's trying to do this, trying to fight back a little bit in her community, I really admire what you've done here. And I appreciate what you've done and know that you have um, you have a lot of supporters and fans out there, um, you know, really, really hoping for a good outcome for you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really hope everyone does something. You know, you just have to find the right way that, that you can fight given your own family life situation. And well, I know we can all just do something. We'll, we'll win this fight. We will. And I know that uh, we're thrilled to have you at IWF as a fellow. You're a huge, um, you know, the, it's a huge get for us to have, uh, have you there um, explaining what you're doing every day to fight back and really as a model uh, to parents on how to do it. So, you know, with, with determination and grace and civility, uh, but, but you're no, you're, you're no pushover. So I think um, again, Thank you for what you're doing and thanks for coming on Bespoke. I think this has been an interesting conversation and come back and, uh, and let us know how things turned out. Thank you so much, Julie. Thanks everyone for being here for another episode of the Bespoke Parenting Hour. If you enjoyed this episode or like the podcast in general, please leave a rating or review on iTunes. This helps ensure that the podcast reaches as many listeners as possible. 
If you haven't subscribed to the Bespoke Parenting Hour on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, or wherever you get your podcasts, please do so so you won't miss an episode. Don't forget to share this episode and let your friends know that they can get Bespoke episodes on their favorite podcast app. From all of us here at the Independent Women's Forum, thanks for listening. Thank you.